today, LML 4807 student. Welcome to Banking Law and Usage. I am one of your lecturers, Michelle Kukamur, and I will conduct the first lecture or online lecture related to banking law. The purpose of this lecture is just to inform you of the course outline and to give you some guidance on what do we expect from an LML student for this year. By now you would have had a look at your study guide, either the hard copy that you received or the online version posted on my UNISA. From that you would have seen that we have 10 lessons that you need to work through and you would have also gathered that the topics that's included in this module is quite extensive. What we're trying to bring home with this specific slide is to alert you of the fact that this module is going to take some time to master and that you need to start immediately so that you can make sure that you have the sufficient knowledge when you get to your exam. Now from this outline of the module you'll see that we start off with mentioning the sources of banking law as you would probably also have come across in some of your other modules while studying at UNISA. We then move on to a discussion of the South African banking system. And this module is going to introduce you to some of the pieces of legislation that you will encounter in the later lessons. For example, I use the abbreviation FICA. So have a look under the lesson dealing with money laundering to establish what the abbreviation FICA stands for. We then also alert you of the concept of financial inclusion. Now financial inclusion is becoming increasingly important under banking law and the aim of financial inclusion is to allow as many individuals or South African um, individuals or part of the population of South Africa to be able to take part in the formal banking sector. In this module, we introduce you to the concept of stock files, for example, a method used um, by many communities, and we alert you to the fact of how stock files developed and then how it interacts with the formal banking sector. We then move on to introduce you to the bank customer relationship, which is mostly a contractual relationship. We will also then discuss the bank as a depository and the bank as a borrower, meaning the taking of deposits. Very, very important as well that we have to explain how the national payment system works. Have you ever wondered what happens if you pay your or pay an amount into your F&B account and then transfer an amount into an APSA account? How does that set of practically work. These are some of the aspects we're going to discuss when we discuss the national payment system. In this lesson, we're also touching on the methods of payment. Now, you can already think to yourself, one method of payment that you have would be a credit card. So we explain to you how the legal nature of a credit act or credit card works. So when would you actually become legally liable for payment that you've made if you, for example, um, insert your card and put in your PIN or do you only become liable when the payment is declined? We then move on to a very important aspect of electronic banking. Now in this lesson, I want to just make it clear that you need to also read all of the case law related to electronic banking as is the case with the other lessons as well. But on the electronic banking, you will see that we've included a few cases dealing with the reversal of an electronic transfer. Here, you would come across a case um, rela well, related to Nissan or Istana versus NetBank or Nissan versus Magnets. So make sure that you also read those cases and then that you are able to apply this in or to the topic of reversal of, of electronic transfers. 
Now, after we've dealt with electronic banking, we move on to credit agreements. Now, immediately, you think to yourself, I don't have a credit agreement. But if you own a credit card, you actually do. And this would be in the form of a credit facility. Now, credit agreements or the lesson on credit agreements relates to the National Credit Act. Now, you would have heard a lot about the National Credit Act in popular press. And you would also have realized that there has actually been a lot of litigation involved in this area. The principles related to credit agreements are quite vast. So please make sure that you allow for sufficient time to study this module. What we'll also do in coming uh, online discussions is take you through a practical question on how you would deal with a discussion of certain provisions of the National Credit Act. But that will only happen um, in online discussion classes to follow. Then the next topic would be money laundering. And remember I told you earlier that FICA is an abbreviation for a specific statute that would be used under money laundering. So in this lesson plan, remember to look out for what does FICA stand for? Now, an important aspect that you have to always keep in mind is that I can actually, in any exam, combine topics. So remember I told you that there's certain barriers relating to financial inclusion. Now, under money laundering, there's a balancing act that needs to take place. Obviously, banks need to receive certain FICA documents. But there are people without a physical address. So how do you comply or how, do, how would a bank comply with their FICA obligations, but still also keep in mind financial inclusion? These are just some of the, the questions that we're going to ask you. And hopefully after um, going through this module, you'll be able to answer. The last lesson that we're going to look at would relate to the financial sector regulation. Now, some of you would have heard the ter term the Twin Peaks model of regulation. And you would have also now learned that South Africa changed its, its model of, of financial regulation a few years back with the adoption of new legislation. So in this last lesson, we introduce you to this new model of financial regulation. So, what do you need to take from this slide? Obviously, the content of the module, but also start to study these topics as early as possible. Now, what must you study? Firstly, we have a prescribed study guide, and each week you'll have outcomes that you need to achieve for a specific week. Very importantly, look at the activities that we include in your study guide for each week. That would be the study activity itself, but also some of the self-assessments. Now, our advice to you in asking the question, how do you eat an elephant, elephant meaning the content of this module, is bite by bite. You have to work consistently every single week so that you sh can make sure that you not only attain the knowledge for the exam, but also take this knowledge into practice, because banking law remains a highly regulated field. And there's so many avenues that you need to know about when you are practicing in banking law. What we've also done to make it a bit easier for you, we've given you a checklist for each week. Now you'll find the checklist at the back of the study guide, but we've also provided these checklists as PDF documents on the MyUNISA site. Now, in addition to your study guide, there are certain journal articles and case law that we want you to also read. Now, I know you guys are going to want to look for the easier option and ask, where's the summary of this case? But eventually, you're going to have to learn how to read a case. Therefore, what we're going to do next week in our online class is take you through a basic discussion of how you read a case and summarize it. 
with your e-reserves remember that it's on the library website and if i may give you a bit of a tip my unisa might not always be available so please 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 at the beginning of the semester already download all of your e-resources and save it for yourself so you know you don't have any issues later on now how would you use your study guide obviously you would have already seen there's a lesson zero which explains to you how to approach using your guide firstly we have a few icons we use and you'll find them on page three of the study guide i've already mentioned that you need to do all of your activities then you also need to consult your tutorial letter 101 in your 101 you will have a list of all the prescribed reading that you need to have for a specific lesson so if you prepare your lesson remember to go and check in the 101 if there are any material or reading material that you need to also read when you study a specific lesson now we've added some additional reading for you, which is on the MyUNISA site. What we've done is we've created glossaries and included some of the important terms in banking and we've translated those terms into the 11 official languages. You'll find these under additional resources on MyUNISA. Sometimes we also load interesting facts on banking law for you and we also post some discussion on the discussion forum on MyUNISA, so keep an eye out for this. Now for this module, you'll have two assignments that you must complete. The first assignment, obviously, you will find the feedback for in your tutorial letter 201, and the second assignment, the feedback will be contained in your tutorial letter 202. We mark your assignments electronically and then send you individual feedback so please have a look at your My Life account for your feedback. At this stage, UNISA is not accepting hard copy assignments. So please make sure that you submit your assignments using the My UNISA function. Now the COVID pandemic has changed the way that we assess you. So for 2021, you will still have the opportunity to do the exam in the comfort of your own home. You get 24 hours within which to complete your examination. Usually the date is communicated to you by the examinations department and we urge you to please monitor your individualized exam table. It has happened before that exam dates change. So make sure that you are aware of those changes on your individualized exam table. Again, we'll have revision activities and or slides shortly before we have the examination date. So it is imperative that you keep on monitoring my UNISA so that you are in the loop with what is happening on this module. Now, sometimes we are not at our desks. So what we want to urge you is if you cannot get a hold of us, via telephone send us an email and we'll try to respond as soon as possible which is usually no longer than 24 hours and if we don't know something we will tell you we will get back to you and we do get back to our students also as we are have to monitor our emails and other forums we are not available on my unisa 24 7. If you have an urgent question, email us or give us a call. You'll see our details on the slide before you and you are welcome to contact any of us and we will be happy to assist you. Now this was just the introduction to this very interesting module. We really look forward to this semester and hope you are also looking forward to learning about banking law. Banking law remains an interesting topic and we are confident that if you are able to master this module that you will also find what we have learned that this is also an interesting field of law to practice in one day.
all of the best for the semester and as we've said we are happy to assist you with any questions you have concerning this module.